morning. Could we have your attention, please? Good morning. We want to welcome you to the Drainage District Board of Directors meeting posted for today, October the 3rd, 2017. The entire court being present. We have a quorum. Please join us in prayer. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father God, we continue just to give you thanks for another beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. Uh, uh, just we continue to pray um, for all the issues that we're facing this uh, this day today, Lord, and just continue to pray for all the responders, all the families uh, in Puerto Rico, Lord, and still in Florida and in, in our great state of Texas as well, Lord. Be with them, um, guide them, and give them strength, Lord. And we definitely continue to pray uh, for the the families in Las Vegas, Lord, uh, for the families uh, uh, that were there, um, the lost ones, loved ones that, that were lost, Lord, and uh, just continue to lift those up to you, uh, the wounded as well, Lord. Um, give them uh, uh, your strength and your healing power, Lord. Um, we just continue to, to lift this uh, elected board that you've appointed, Lord, this judge and four commissioners to lead this great county. Lift them up to you, Lord. Continue to bless them. Bless them with your knowledge, Lord. Bless them with your your guidance, Lord. Bless them with your peace, Lord, as to make these difficult decisions that affect us all, Lord. I, I continue to humbly ask for your your guidance for myself, my staff, uh, for all these great uh, leaders of our county, Lord. But we want to do what's best for for this great county we live in, Lord. Uh, I ask all this in your son's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Under open forum, did anyone sign up? All right, the first presenter is uh, Eva Bustos. Good morning. You can stand right there behind that microphone. Yes, sir. Did you all get my pictures? Oh, okay. Okay. Good morning. I'm Eva Bustos. On the picture, the first picture that you have, with it shows my property where I'm landlocked. I'm off of mile three between Mercedes and La Feria. You'll see the, the turquoise square, and I'm at the very end. The right south of me is the ditch, and there's a road leading to my property, but I'm not allowed by the county to use that <coughs> to get to my property, and that's the topic of my discussion today. Also, you notice the other pictures with the ditch, and that shows how it's being cleaned, supposedly. But as you can see, all the debris taken out of the ditch is placed on that little access road leading back to my property. I'm not being allowed back there. I own property north and south of that ditch. And the irrigation district goes in and cleans out the ditch. You see how it's cleaned out, supposedly. They leave all that mess behind. And I'm here requesting permission to use that road to get to my property where I'm landlocked. The county uses it. Why can't I? I own north and south of that ditch. You'll see the pictures of the ditch. It's at a standstill. It doesn't drain anywhere. It's stagnant. It sits there. That was supposed to have been closed back in 1964. And they haven't closed it. But I'm the first person to come forward to complain about that. I just want access to my landlocked property. If the county has access to go use that road to go to, my, to that end, why can't I? Why can't we share? That, that's something that we, we, we cannot res be responding in during open forum, but mm -hmm. it certainly it, you've brought it to our attention. Yes, sir. We're going to go ahead and uh, direct our attorney, Mr. Steve Crane, mm -hmm. to look into it. And uh, why don't you give us your phone number or address? It's, it's on each piece of paper that you've got in front of you. <clears throat> My phone number's All right. on each piece of paper. And uh, how soon will I get some kind of response? Because I have a whole list of people that I have spoken to throughout the years. I've, this has been an ongoing issue for several years. And everybody calls me back one time, and then they never call me back again. 
Right. So do, do we have a time frame in which he's going to call me and get in touch with me? Well, we don't have a time frame at this point, but okay. uh, I'm, uh, and I know that the, our best efforts are going to be made by our attorney to look into it and then okay. respond. I appreciate that. And, and what is your attorney's name? Steve Crane. Steve Frank? Steve Crane. Steve. We'll have Yeah. I'm just going to visit with her okay. to see where the location is and see if it is, whose system it is. We'll get all that. All right. Okay. Thank you. The next presenter is Maria Infante. Buenos días, señor don, señor comisionado Palacios. Con mucho gusto vengo aquí a, a presentar lo que han hecho en la colonia de bueno, yo me llamo María de Jesús Infante, es mi nombre. Este, estamos muy agradecidos que, que este, nos han hecho el, el trabajo de allí de la colonia del Charro número 2, Edimburgo. Estamos muy agradecidos todos por el labor que nos han hecho, desde así como yo estoy ahí como 40 años allí, y ahora estamos muy gustosos todos porque ya... Van arreglando ya muy bien, ¿verdad? Toda la gente está muy agradecida. Y también les doy muchas gracias, las muchísimas gracias por, por los trabajos que nos han hecho. Y también doy gracias también a los, aquí a la señora, a los señores de la Unión de Campesinos de Lupe, que ellos también, estoy con ellos y ahí nos, nos están apoyando a nosotros, a todas las colonias, a todos. Y pues... Pues las últimas, las últimas palabras que tengo para decirles que yo estoy muy agradecida y toda la gente ahí está muy agradecida también. Ya tienen gusto, que ya estamos muy bien. Ya cuando llueve, ya el agua se va y ya no se, no se hunde en nuestras casas. Gracias, muchísimas gracias y que Dios los bendiga en su labor, de sus trabajos. Es lo que, es lo que yo pido, ¿verdad? Las últimas palabras. Para ustedes y para todos, el, toda la comunidad de, de, de Lupe y todas las demás comunidades. Okay. Muchas, muchísimas gracias y que Dios los bendiga en toda su labor, de su trabajo. Okay. Good morning. My name is Maria Infante. I live in the colonial charro number two and I wanted to just uh, thank Commissioner Palacios for all the, uh, the work that they've been doing in my colonia. I've been living in there almost 40 years. And now um, you have been doing a really good job. And we just wanted to bring you the things from all the community that are leaving Colonia Charo number two, because they're really grateful for all the work. And I just wanted to thank you one more time for all the work that you're doing and ask blessings on all of you for the great labor that you're doing. Thank you. On our consent agenda, any concerns? Uh, no, Judge. Motion to approve. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Item 5. Yes, sir. Uh, discussion on Delcon Drain Zition 1 Projects Maintenance and Operations, uh, 5A, Precinct 4, Curry Drain. Uh, this is one of our east-west laterals. Um, it actually uh, starts over on the on the west side, uh, or excuse me, on the east side of uh, uh, Raul Longoria, and it meanders all the way east uh, across, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Dillon Road into our 200-acre detention facility that we have there. Um, and we're right now focusing between Alamo Road and Valverde uh, to basically improve that area, uh, shift the ditch over as well, because that hugs the road there on the north side. So we have some plans uh, in place already um, to improve um, the maintenance operation for that ditch. It's very difficult for us to maintain currently. So uh, we're looking at shifting that ditch over, um, which will facilitate maintenance, but at the same time provide a a good uh, a buffer zone for the traveling public in that area. So uh, that's one of the projects that, that we have ongoing in Precinct 4. Just wanted to, to bring it up to the public that, that is forthcoming, and we anticipate in 2018 initiating construction on that on that project. So um, we have the Precinct 2 J14 drain, excuse me, Precinct 4 as well, J14 drain. That's the northeast portion, actually borders with Precinct 1 in that area. Uh, that's one of our regional areas that we've had some issues there on 22 and a half and brush line uh, to the north. Uh, we do have a re regional attention facility that is uh, almost 95% constructed. Uh, and then this drain is being developed to carry those waters 
uh, out of that area as well. Uh, you know, we've had some residential areas that have been underwater in, in the past in that area, so uh, we've moved to, to improve those areas uh, to provide uh, uh, regional drainage. Uh, and this also will serve as one of the outfalls in the future for uh, the, the projected Highway 68 that is coming through that area. So, um, and, and it's it's ongoing right now. The design is fully com uh, completed, and uh, we just initiated construction. We're about 10, 15 percent into the construction phase of it. So, uh, and then the last project I wanted to talk about was uh, the Precinct One Mile 17 La Villa drainage improvements. Um, just uh, it, it seems like a simple project, but when you get into it, you know you've got issues with gas lines, issues with utilities. Uh, but we're under construction now. We finally uh, got it all in place, put in a crossing across Mile 17 to interconnect uh, uh, into a ditch there. They've had some issues in the past in La Villa in that area because the, the current existing crossing was too high because of the gas line, so we were able to put it under. Uh, we did partner with Precinct 1 the City of La Villa. There was a sewer line that they adjusted uh, while we did the work, so it was a good partnership to get it all together. So uh, uh, we're fully completed with that project. So. Uh, even though it's a small project, it's going to help that area tremendously in, in the Libya area. So just wanted to brief the board and the public and some of the projects that the district's doing. What is the purpose of the discussion, then? Come again? The, pur what the purpose in, put in placing this item on the agenda, especially 5B. Uh, what's the next step? Oh, well, 5B uh, is, is basically under construction, Judge, already. Um, is that what you're asking for Precinct 4J14? or It's the status, Judge. Yeah, I put it on for for just discussion, and you know, just basically, uh, it, it's it's titled uh, projects maintenance and operations. Just to brief the board and the public, a lot of the projects that we're doing uh, uh, countywide in, in our in our in our district. How many um, lots are in that border town subdivision? Uh, currently, right now. The border town um, is being proposed. I want to say it's a 40-acre development, but there's the main reason we're doing the J14 is not because of that. The main reason is to the west we have um, Santa Cruz Gardens number two, we have Ingleman uh, in Loma Verde subdivision number three in that area, and that area has experienced a lot of flooding in the past. So what we did is we looked at um, what drainage is available, and there was none really there between uh, brush line and all the way to uh, sunflower. There was nothing really available. They had some some private ditches that were there. So we partnered with some of the landowners and said, okay, we need to get these people out of water. How can we do it? All right. So they partnered. They donated right away for the ditch. So we're doing the ditch improvements to get people that are currently underwater out of it to get it out into, our, into the existing system that we currently are working with uh, the Santa Cruz Irrigation District uh, to take over via interlocal and manage the drainage for that area. I had a resident come by and talk me into going with him, and he wanted to go show me how this is, what the, that the drainage for this particular subdivision was not going was not going to be adequate. And um, uh, uh, frankly, I'd like for you to make some time maybe this week and, and of uh, come in to my office and demonstrate to me how. Why you feel that drainage will be adequate for the uh, for this particular subdivision? Of course. Uh, now, if you're referring to Border Town, they do have storm sewer system that their design and our engineering house has reviewed. You know, pipe sizes range from I don't know 36 or so down to to 24s. But we can look at it, of course. Yeah. Ultimately, when that system gets built, it's all going east, and that's what we're partnering with uh, Santa Cruz right now to improve their system that they have and, and, and maintain it um, so it can have interconnection all the way through. Yeah, Judge, if I may add, this well, we is... Definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll set that up, Judge. Yes, I sir. think this is uh, now the second time we've worked with developers within the uh, area where they've had historical flooding. Um, one of the things that's critical is not just the subdivision, uh, this subdivision in particular, but the outfall and the partnership with Santa Cruz, because that's going to allow the outfall. So we've been detaining, retaining... But we've never had an outfall until they've uh, further on a, a, an outfall plan with Santa Cruz. So I would say no, it's probably not adequate, that little project. But the outfall is critical because that's where that drainage system is going to be dumping its water into. It, we'll make time for sure, Judge. I'll bring you the plans and everything for the whole master area that we have planned there and everything. And in particular, any development that's existing, which is our focus, is to get the development that's existing out of water. And the proposed developments are required to connect to the nearest outfall 
uh, with storm sewer system, which this development has done. But we'll look at it as well. Uh, I'll right. be more than happy Thanks. to, Thank you to you visit with you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, item six, if I may. Um, yes. Resolution in support of Texas Water Development Board and the Valley Legislative Delegation for the $4.5 million grant issued to Dow County District Number 1 for the Rimville Drain Project. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, if, if I may, uh, this Friday uh, we have the Chairman of Water Development Board here uh, joining us at a, a store groundbreaking for the Raymondville Drain. It's the first leg that we're looking at actual construction. Uh, the 4.5 is the second installment that we've received from Water Development Board. The first one was 5.6 million. That's close to almost 10 to 11 million dollars we've, we've received from state funds. Not to add the 7 million that's coming from Restore Act on the federal side, but again, uh, it's just uh, one of the things that we're, we're advocating is that these dollars go straight to construction. Uh, it's critical that this, the leg that we're looking at constructing uh, will have an immediate impact to our more urbanized areas, as well as. Uh, 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 revert some water that will open up our north main drain so that we can help the lower lying colonia areas but it's a very very exciting period of of, of the district's uh, time where we're actually going to be able to turn dirt on one of the biggest projects that we have uh, judge if I may read the resolution uh, would that be okay yes yes no answer. great thank you resolution support of the Texas water development board and the valid legislative Delegation for the four and a half million dollar grant issued to Dow County Drain District Number One for the Rainbow Drain Project. Whereas during the 84th regular Texas Legislative Session of 2015, the Texas Valley Legislative Delegation, led by the efforts of Senator Juan Chuy Hinojosa, introduced Rider 27 to the General Appropriations Act. Whereas the Texas Valley Legislation is made up of Texas Juan Chuy Hinojosa, excuse me, <coughs> Texas Senator Juan Chuy Hinojosa, Texas Senator Eddie. Lucio Jr., Texas Representative Terry Canales, Texas Representative Oscar Longoria, Texas Representative uh, Robert Bobby Guerra, Texas Representative Armando Mando Martinez, Texas Representative Sergio Munoz, Texas Representative Eddie Lucio III, Texas Representative Rene Oliveira, and Texas Representative Ra uh, Ryan Guillen, whereas Rider Number 27 tasked the Texas Water Development Board to allocate an amount not to exceed $10 million out of the General Revenue Fund for the purpose of making a grant to implement a flood control project authorized and designated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, whereas the Dow County Drainage District Number 1, located in Dow County, Texas, the district filed an application for the financial assistance with Texas Water Development Board in an amount of $4.5 million in grant funds for improvements and expansion of the Rainville Drain Project, whereas in accordance with its duties and responsibilities under Texas Water Code 6.12, through the leadership of Texas Water Development Board Chairman Beck Brune, Commissioner Kathleen Jackson and Commissioner P. M. Lake, four and a half million in grant funds were allocated for the improvements and expansion of the Rainbow Drain Project, and whereas through the exceptional leadership of the Texas Valley Legislative Delegation, led by the efforts of Senator Juan Chuy Hinojosa and the Texas Water Development Board, led by the efforts of Chairman uh, Beck Brune, the grant funding will be used to build the first phase of the Rainbow Drain Project, which will result in tremendous flood control for the Rio Grande Valley. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of Dow County Drainage District Number 1 does hereby rec recognize and honor Texas Senator Chuy Juan Hinojosa, Texas Senator Eddie Lucio Jr., Texas Representative Terry Canales, Texas Representative Oscar Longoria, Texas Representative Robert Bobby Guerra, Texas Representative Armando Mando Martinez, Texas Representative Sergio Munoz, Texas Representative Eddie Lucio III, Texas Representative Rene Oliveira, Texas Representative Ryan Guillen, Texas Water Development Board Chairman Beck Brune, Texas Water Development Board Commissioner Kathleen Jackson, and Texas Water Development Board Commissioner Pete M. Lake for their, exception, their exceptional leadership, which will result in construction of the first phase of the Rainbow Drain Project, which in turn will result in a regional solution to flooding in the Rio Grande Valley that will last for generations to come. Approved this third day of October 2017. Motion to approve. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Yes, it is a historical day this Friday. Uh, it's a project long time coming, and it is a regional project. It's one of our main projects that we have at the Drainage District, and uh, we're excited to get finally uh, get this project under construction, the first segment, and continue on pushing this project through uh, to uh, ultimate full build-out construction uh, in the future. So, thank you. Congratulations to you and to Commissioner. Joseph and all the well, people who helped put that together. Great job. It's been the whole board, but uh, the important note is that the rider revolves, so every year we're going to have an opportunity to be able to go back to Water Development Board 
and get more state funding. Uh, it, it removes the burden on our local taxpayer uh, immediately to, to fund it at 100%. Uh, we're going to continue to advance the project, but uh, it's a really good time for us right now in, 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 in the efforts to advance drainage in our area. Great job. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> if I may, item 7. Uh, request and approval of closing documents, parcel one, as it relates to downtown drainage district number one administration building project and authority of the chairman of the board to execute documents. So moved. Second. <laughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Seven B, pursuant to the board's approval, agenda item number six one eight eight zero A, requesting approval to issue manual payment in the amount of thirty two thousand thirty two thousand six hundred sixteen dollars to Valley Land Title Company, order file number one five three seven eight zero, parcel one. Second. Those, and those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 8, requesting approval of closing documents of Parcel 20 as it relates to Senator Chavez Drain Phase 2 project and authority for the Chairman of the Board to execute documents. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we do have a short item on executive session. Pursuing the section 551071 and 072, I need a motion to proceed to executive session. So, so moved. Move. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 I motion carries. We're going to be in executive session for a short while. All right, sir. I, uh, open, back session. In open session. Yes, sir. Real estate acquisition will proceed as directed. And item B, pending a potential litigation, uh, no action. Move to adjourn. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. This time we're going to be convening our regular Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court meeting posted for today, October the 3rd, 2017. The entire court being present, we have a quorum. Please join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty God, we come together today for the good of the citizens of Hidalgo County. Give us your wisdom as we make decisions that will affect them today and in the years to come. Help us to work well together, recognizing that each of us are here because we want what's best for Hidalgo County. We ask for your blessing and your guidance. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 If you could remain standing for a moment of silence. Um, please join our Commissioner's Court in observing a moment of silence for the victims of the Sunday night shooting in Las Vegas. As President Trump declared in a proclamation inter uh, issued yesterday, we mourn all with all those whose loved ones were murdered and injured in that cowardly attack on the concert goers. Our flags continue to fly at half-mast as a mark of respect for the victims until sunset Friday, October 6th. Now a moment of silence. Thank you. You know, these moments in silence are becoming too much a part of the norm. I hope that our Congress will finally get together and make some changes and impose some common sense into gun control. But that's another issue. Our consent agenda, any concerns? Uh, I'm going to ask the court to pull the consent agenda item 4A. Everything else is in order. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Consent agenda item 4A, uh, just to clarify, it is program 1 with respect to the transfer and not program 2. With that uh, clarification, I'd ask the court to take action on that transfer. Move to approve. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, under item 5A, at this time we're going to be having a video present. Is it time for the video? A video presentation uh, for the new Hidalgo County Courthouse trying to demonstrate the need that exists to construct our new facility and uh, how we can uh, go about funding it at this time. Go ahead, Julie.
it's the video is approximately eight minutes and then and two courts housed outside of the courthouse premises. And due to our rising population, the state has mandated that we add an additional district court in 2019. Along with our 24 courts, the courthouse also houses several county offices, including the district clerk and county clerk. Altogether, more than 300 employees work in the courthouse, and that number is expected to grow as we provide more services for our constituents. We can no longer place band-aids on this 63-year-old outdated building. The county's responsibilities to our constituents is law, justice, and the secure storage of important documents. As mandated by the state, the county must provide these five essential things that make our community livable. The last four core functions are conducted in our courthouse. By law, we must uphold these mandates. As a county, it is our responsibility to hold and secure inmates awaiting trial. We must adequately offer a court system to protect your legal rights. And it is our duty to properly store thousands of documents at its current state, our courthouse does not adequately satisfy those four requirements. Safety is our number one priority at the courthouse. About 10 times a day, inmates in custody are escorted through the same hallway the public uses. Prisoners are mere inches away from victims and victims' families. The new courthouse would have separate entrances and more secure facilities for holding and transporting inmates keeping all parties divided and safe. Five county court at law courtrooms are housed in the annex building outside the courthouse. Jurors, defendants, lawyers, and witnesses can wait several hours to go before a judge. With our hot and humid Texas weather, this can become extremely uncomfortable for everyone. Our 430th and 449th district courts are housed miles away from the courthouse. Thousands of dollars are spent yearly to lease the space and to provide additional security for these courts. With limited staff, the court's isolation can delay response time if there is an emergency. In the past 60 years, time has taken its toll on the courthouse's structure and maintenance. Each year, the cost of maintaining the building rises and health issues increase. Some of these issues include inadequate fire alarms, concerns about asbestos, mold and lead-based paint, deteriorating walls, cracked ceilings, and rusty pipes. Anytime it rains, the building leaks and floods. Staff at the county clerk and district clerk can see inches of water in their offices and find their desks covered in mold. Storage rooms that hold thousands of county records are at risk of being damaged. 
When old equipment and machines break down, it can cause gas leaks and smoke, forcing evacuations of the entire courthouse and surrounding annex buildings. Each time we evacuate, the county loses money with employee downtime, postponed hearings, and costly repairs. Ignoring these issues and doing nothing is going to cost you more. The time to build is now. And building can be done without unduly burdening the county. Here's how. Right now, we have a solid financial plan. Interest rates are the lowest they've been in recent history, and we are increasing revenue. In the next 30 years, we expect to receive $45 million from our filing fee. Plus, we have commitments from transportation and the city of Edinburgh. If we wait, we risk losing all of those advantages. Each year, construction costs are escalating, rising at 4 to 6 percent annually. That adds up to $9 million a year. So today's $150 million project will cost up to $171 million if we wait just three years. Trying to renovate or rehab our current courthouse is not fiscally responsible and is a waste of taxpayer dollars. Renovation costs are expected to be approximately $50 million, and that doesn't address the safety, health, or space issues. During a renovation, the county would spend millions temporarily housing all of the courts and county offices in satellite locations, wasting more taxpayer money. Your money will be better spent constructing a building that'll last decades, not years. Hidalgo County is in the best financial shape in its 165-year history. We have not increased taxes in 16 years, and Commissioner's Court is committed to completing this project without a tax increase. In fact, with our continued economic success, we were able to lower taxes in 2017. We have the lowest interest rates in a generation, with rates expected to rise in the near future. This is the time to take advantage and save money. We can maintain the same level of debt payments, incur the new debt to build the courthouse, and not have to increase taxes to cover the additional debt. This makes now the best financial time to build. A courthouse isn't a place you choose to go, it's a place you are summoned to go. And while you're here, we want you to be safe and secure. The typical lifespan of a courthouse is 40 to 50 years. Our current courthouse is 63 years old. This five-story building is way past its expiration date. Our new courthouse will be more than 340,000 square feet. It'll be seven stories tall with space for 10 additional courtrooms. It will have a separate and secure entrance and holding space for inmates. And it will have 21st century technology and security features for our constituents. This new courthouse will be designed to serve Hidalgo County into the 22nd century. The current courthouse is overcrowded, unsafe, and the liability is indisputable. Our new courthouse will be designed to grow and serve the county for generations to come. The time is now. to thank um, At Jackie. this time, we wanted to move up item number 6A. Okay. Go uh, ahead. I'm sorry. From the district attorney's office, if our esteemed DA could join us. Um, item 6A is a proclamation declaring October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Joining us straight from the third annual Purple Day, Purple Day International Informational Fair and News Conference is our esteemed Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney, Ricardo Rodriguez, Jr., and he's joined um, by Public Policy Director for the Texas Council on Family Violence, Aaron Setliff, the DA's Victims Unit Director, Rosie Martinez, Victims Advocates, and participants from Purple Day. If you'd all care to come up and join us, you're, you're welcome to. And if you could stand to my right, please, so that you're all here. Okay. Whereas the crime of domestic violence violates an individual's privacy and dignity, security and humanity, 
due to systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control. Domestic violence extends to the abuse of children and the elderly. And whereas the problems of domestic violence are not confined to any particular group or groups of people, but cut across all economic, racial, and societal barriers, and are supported by societal indifferences. And whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, directly affecting individuals and society as a whole, here in this community and throughout the United States and in the world. And whereas the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office Victims Unit and Hidalgo County Family Violence Task Force, in collaboration with other local groups and agencies, are working to educate the public about resources available for victims of domestic violence. And whereas survivors of domestic violence themselves have been at the forefront of efforts to bring peace and equality to the home, domestic violence can no longer be treated as a silent epidemic. Now therefore be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby proclaims the month of October 2017 to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urges all citizens to actively participate in scheduled activities and programs to work toward eradicating domestic violence, improving victim safety, and holding perpetrators of domestic abuse accountable for their actions against individual victims and our society as a whole. Approve this third day of October 2017. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Judge, commissioners, as always, thank you very much for your support. You know, you see all these individuals standing here before you. I guess the message that I want to send out, that we want to send out, is that we're not afraid to talk about domestic violence. We're not going to stay silent. We're not going to be complacent. We have to take a step forward and we have to stand up for those individuals that are afraid to come forward. You know, we want to tell them not to be afraid. We want to tell them that we're here. We have young children. We have prosecutors. We have advocates and agencies that have come together. We have law enforcement from all over the county. Uh, we have so many individuals that have stepped forward uh, and make sure that we don't stay silent about the issue of domestic violence. Uh, it, it's difficult for, for individuals, uh, for example, to live in a household uh, and to be going through domestic violence that have a family and have children. You know, it, it's, it's hard for that individual, individual to step forward and, and um, maybe, you know, ha think that Come, by coming forward, they're going to ruin their chance, their, you know, their, their chances of having a family, or that individual that's maybe uh, not a U.S. citizen, you know, and who's who's threatened every day by domestic violence. You know, we want to tell those individuals not to be afraid. We are here to help. Uh, we are here to assist. Um, and by the numbers that we have here and the people in the audience, again, you know, we're showing our strength, and and we're going to continue. Um, you know, building on this movement uh, to be able to uh, stop domestic violence. Uh, again, I want to thank all of you uh, for your support. I want to thank all the public officials that were out at the press conference. I want to thank our community for being there. I want to thank, again, all the advocates and agencies. I want to thank Rosie Martinez, our units director, and also our crime victim units advocates, our domestic violence unit, uh, again, our prosecutors. You know, thank you for everything that you do. I'd like to recognize, uh, you know, we have a, an important uh, individual here with us today that came all the way from Austin. Unfortunately, you know, we couldn't lower the temperature a little bit more, you know, to, uh, to um, you know, have it the same as in Austin. But uh, Mr. Aaron Setliff is here uh, on behalf of Texas Council on, on Family Violence, and he is a public policy director of TCFV, and we want to thank you for being here. Um, again, you know, they, they, himself and others have taken great notice in, in what's going on here, and um, I'm going to give him an opportunity to um, at least, you know, come forward and, and, and introduce himself. Judge, thank you, and, and thank you, Judge, for just a moment to talk with y'all. I really appreciate being able to um, participate in your local activities because they're really um, a shining light 
for the rest of Texas to be able to get, begin to know about domestic violence, be able to predict when domestic violence is going to happen with an eye towards preventing it. And so um, I really, uh, I mentioned it over at the press conference, but I think it is really um, important for us to remember Maria Gallegos, Maria Guadalupe Sobrevi Sobrevilla, Glenda Wood, and Yolanda de Anda, all four of the women killed in Edinburgh uh, in Texas, four of the, those are Edinburgh women that were killed in Texas, um, uh, of the total amount, uh, in 2015 there were 158 women killed, we're about to release the 2016 number, and those women were killed in 2016, really thinking about that three of those women were shot and they left eight children without a mother in your community. So really beginning to know about domestic violence, but working with um, the district attorney's office and other great partners like the commissioner's court to come up with solutions around finding safety and shelter within the domestic violence shelters, as well as holding offenders accountable. Y'all are really providing a great, uh, a great uh, example of, for other places across Texas. We'll continue to look at y'all and 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 uh, and glean great uh, practices and, and approaches from y'all's approach, and then we'll also be interacting with you. So I, I appreciate a little time to talk with y'all and get to know you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and you, sir. I want to thank you for, for your presence here today. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, and, and acknowledge uh, the agencies and advocates that are here. Uh, Children's Advocacy Center, um, UTRGV, Office of Violence Prevention. We have CASA. We have Fuerza del Valle. We have Women Together, uh, Safe Haven for Kids. We have uh, uh, Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. We have the Dow County Sheriff's Office. We have Rio Grande Valley Family and Friends of Murdered Children. Uh, we have STC. We have DHR uh, Safe Haven. Uh, we have Hope Family Health Care. Uh, we have TR TRLA. We have Angels of Love, Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, MHP Salud, uh, Nuevo Lu Nueva Luz Foundation, and then the different law enforcement agencies. I know we have Peñitas. We had West Local PD. We had Sullivan PD. We had Hidalgo PD, Far PD, uh, San, Juan, San Juan PD, Mission PD and so many other agencies that, again, uh, joined us today. So, uh, the Children's, the Children's, Bereavement, Children's uh, Bereavement Center also here. And, again, you see a lot of the uh, kids here from, from West Local um, who, who have started at an early age uh, with the prevention awareness of uh, domestic violence. And we also have the school from, uh, where are you all from? Sotomayor so also here with us. So. Again, uh, we want to thank you for all your support, and again, we want to thank every individual that's here today uh, for all their hard work and uh, making sure that uh, uh, we're there for, for victims, uh, especially victims of domestic violence. Okay? So thank you again. God bless you all, and uh, thank you for your support. Rick, you need to, you need to be commended for your efforts in this regard. You, This is one of those issues that... Uh, one of those family secret type of issues that needs to be brought out into into the public forum and to open and to more openness in order to be able to be uh, stopped. And certainly, you need to be thanked for what you're doing in this regard. That, thank you, Judge, and again, thank you for joining us today. And again, you know, we, we just want to make sure that we offer the best service that we can out there. And again, we've been joined by so many to do that. All right. So, thank you again. Great thank job. you. Thank you. May we take a picture? Yes. Yeah. If you'll all um, bear with me, yeah, commissioners yeah. and judge, can you all come forward? We're going to put you in front. And if you all can start lining up in the back, yeah. sir, you you be up front with the commissioners. By the chairs or yeah, let's, um, let's see if we can get you all. Um, yeah.
this out of the way. Okay, if you can all watch Ivana there on the footstool. see themselves on TV to, that's Thursday night at 8 o'clock. B. Five B. Item five B. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Item five B is a proclamation declaring October twenty seventeen as Manufacturing Month in Hidalgo County. Here to accept the proclamation and introduce his colleagues, 
colleagues is Mike Willis, Executive Director of South Texas Manufacturers Association. If you all could stand to my right. Whereas for generations, manufacturing has played a critical role in Texas's diverse economy, Texas is home to approximately 17,600 manufacturing firms, 75 of which are located in Hidalgo County. And whereas manufacturing in Texas constitutes 14.3% of the total output in the state, totaling approximately $227 billion in 2015. And whereas manufacturers in Texas employ 7.1% of the workforce, an estimated 875,000 manufacturing employees, including 6,500 right here in Hidalgo County. And whereas manufacturing jobs enable Texas families to realize the dreams of owning a home, sending a child to college, and enjoying a secure retirement. And manufacturers pay millions of dollars annually supporting schools, law enforcement, emergency preparedness, public works, and other essential services. And whereas National Manufacturing Day is held annually on the first Friday of October, and the month of October is annually celebrated as National Manufacturing Month, and whereas residents are encouraged to support the work of manufacturing companies by purchasing products manufactured in Hidalgo County and in the United States of America. And whereas to celebrate Manufacturing Month, entities across Hidalgo County, including cities, economic development corporations, universities, school districts, manufacturing companies, and others in relevant fields are partnering to host various events um, to showcase modern manufacturing technology and careers. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court does hereby proclaim October 2017 as Manufacturing Month in Hidalgo County and recognizes the valuable contributions the manufacturing companies and their employees provide to our communities. Approve this third day of October 2017. Move for approval. Second. Those, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Judge and Commissioners, and thank you, Julie, for all your support. Um, I'm joined, I want to introduce a few people. I'm joined by Frank Amaras, the CEO of Workforce Solutions. It covers Hidalgo, Willis, and Star Counties. I have Belinda Vargas, a C, uh, CTE coordinator for Far San Juan Alamo School District, and I have Cindy Garza representing Far EDC, the business development director. Um, Friday, uh, she, Friday, October 6th is National Manufacturing Day, October's Manufacturing Month. This is the time when the industry uh, opens its doors to, the, to schools, especially in the public, to try to increase awareness of our industry and of the great career opportunities that, that continue to exist across the USA and right here in Hidalgo County. We've been doing this for three years now in the region. Uh, this is the third year you all have supported this, this initiative as well. This year we're going to have over 14 manufacturing companies that are opening their doors to allow Hidalgo County middle school and high school students to tour their plants. And uh, South Texas College is hosting day-long events on October the 6th and 27th that will involve six area school districts and over 200 students. PSJA school districts holding a day-long event tomorrow at their T-STEM Academy. So we appreciate uh, your time and thank you so much for your support. Item 5C. Good morning, Judge Commissioners.
Michael Leo, County Judge's Office. 5C is requesting authorization for County Judge to sign letter of support for fiscal year 2017 Tiger Grant application to be submitted by the City of Far. Uh, there's no financial contribution on behalf of the County. This is just a letter of support. Uh, on behalf of Mayor Ambrosio Hernandez from the City of Far, we have Cynthia Garza from the Far ADC here as well. So, um, so moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Do you want to say something? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Commission, for having us here today. And just so, just to give you a quick overview of what we're applying for, uh, Tiger funding is a federal project under USDOT uh, grant mechanism that's in its ninth round. This year, it's a $500 million investment in grant funding. Uh, an urban project like ours could get anywhere in between 5 to $12 million. This is the first time that the city has large infrastructure projects within the port of entry that would qualify for this funding. Uh, it's very difficult funding to get, and so we're submitting three projects that fall within our port of entry. One is our phase one of dry storage uh, a dock facility and our phase two is our, co our cold storage facility along with an agricultural training laboratory as well. These are all projects that have been approved by CBP and are currently under a program called the Donation Acceptance Program with CBP. So again, thank you very much for your time and for your letter of support. Um, item 5D is approval of order and interlocal agreement by and among the City of McAllen for Hidalgo County and Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number 2A, City of McAllen, Texas, allowing for Hidalgo County to participate in the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number 2A. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. To go along with that, we have item two is appointment of one board member to represent the County of Hidalgo on the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number 2A, City of McAllen, Texas Board of Directors. So there's two board members? Yeah, there's two that need to be appointed. Do you want me to appoint this one? No, okay. It's the same thing. Um, Mike, who's, who's presently serving on it? This is a new one that we're just wrapping up. We have McAllen Tours 1 that I'm serving on, but this is McAllen Tours 2A. So this is a new board, or a new Tours. Right, do you want to serve on it, or do we, do, you, do we need to put Yolanda, or would you be willing to do it? I can do it if the court would like. So right. moved. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. What we're doing now with Tours is we're asking the, the entities that we're working with if we can have a second appointment. Now, by statute, we're giving one. So the second rec would be a recommendation. This gives us additional coverage in case that, that particular board member can't make a meeting. We have somebody else as well. And it kind of goes in line. These church projects are getting bigger, and it's not the kind of project that you open, close, put it away. It's going to be an active board for the next 20 years, so we'd like to stay as involved as, on these boards as we can. So item three is a recommendation to designate a second board member to represent the county of Hidalgo on the tax increment of investment zone number 2A, City of McAllen, Texas, Board of Directors, which will, the appointment will be submitted to the City of McAllen for action. I'd like to appoint Armando Garza, Jr. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Under the District Attorney's Office, uh, item 6B. Good morning, Commissioners, Judge Rosalinda Cantu presenting for the District Attorney's Office. Item 6B, Hidalgo County DA's Office Region 3 Border Prosecution Unit Grant Fund 1281, approval to submit a BPU grant number 2537807, budget adjustment to the Office of the Governor. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. May I proceed to item 7? Go ahead. 7A, HIDA Task Force, requesting authorization and approval to accept award number G17SS0002A, reprogram number one, between Hidalgo County and the Executive Office of the President, Office of the National Drug Control Policy, reprogramming the award amount of 116,491. Grand period is from January 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2018. 
Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two, approval of transfer of funds. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And number three, requesting authorization to pay overtime under the grant terms and conditions. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our tax office, number eight. Good morning, Judge Commissioner. Sul Espinosa from the Tax Office. Good morning, sir. Item 8A, approval of amendment to interlocal cooperation agreement for tax assessment and collection for the following entities, La Villa ISD, City of Far, and City of La Jolla. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 8B, good morning, Judge Santos Casilleja, Motor Vehicle Manager. Presentation for discussion, consideration, acceptance, and approval of a dealer deputy agreement between Hidalgo County and High Tech San Juan LLC, doing business as Audi San Juan, dealer number P43028. Dealer desires to act as an agent of the tax assessor collector in the issuance of motor vehicle registration stickers and license plates. Audio San Juan agrees to comply with the requirements of the web dealer system of Texas Department of Motor Vehicles and will furnish and maintain any necessary equipment. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Item 9, our Sheriff's Office. Uh, good morning, Joel Rivera, Division Chief. On behalf of Sheriff Eddie Guerra, Agenda Item 9A, approval of fiscal year overtime agreement. Uh, between the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force and the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office in the amount of $15,000. So moved. Second. Those, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Authorization to pay overtime reimbursement under the grant terms and conditions. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of collection of revenues as certified by the County Auditor for OSADEF agreement. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 I motion carries. Approval approval of op appropriation of funds in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Agenda item nine B, uh, approval of organized crime drug enforcement task force agreement between the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office and Drug Enforcement Administration, McAllen District Office, Houston Division Office, OSADEF Strike Force Group D eighty one. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of certification of revenue as certified by the county auditor for the OSADEF grant agreement. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval to appropriate OSADEF grant award in the amount of $15,000. 15800 right? 15800 I'm sorry. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 10, our executive office. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Uh, there's no action under 9, I'm sorry, 10, 1, and 2. I'm going to go on to 10B. Um, requesting permission, uh, there's a request for permission by 90, uh, by 985, the Boom Radio, in association with Palm Valley Animal Center, to use the courthouse parking lot on Saturday, April 28, 2018. Uh, from 8 to 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And this is for Food of Palooza and a taste of the Rio Grande Valley Food Festival event. Judge Commissioners, uh, I have uh, worked with uh, Michael and Jonathan at the judge's office, uh, given that the request is for uh, April of next year with respect to the courthouse project. Uh, this should not uh, at all uh, interfere uh, with the timeline uh, for that project. So uh, everything is in order. So Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Judge Commission, with your permission, item 11A for human resources. Uh, I'm asking approval for the following personnel actions. This will be effective next full pay period, 10 16 of this year. It's a clothing allowance to add to slot 65. The program number is 280 It is to a deputy sheriff, step two, and the budget allowance of $500. I think we need to do A first. I'm sorry, 11A, uh, requesting waiver of the budget amendment policy, personal related amendments, if applicable, for the personal. Items listed. Second. Move motion to approve. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Apologies. And B for the clothing allowance. Motion, motion to approve 11B. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Item 12, Urban County. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. P.R. Avila with Urban County. 12A, I'm requesting the authorization to amend construction contract with Venture Contractors, LLC, for the reduction of contract days from 150 consecutive calendar days to 120 consecutive uh, calendar days for the precinct number four, Parks and Recreational uh, Facility Improvements. So moved. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 13, our health department. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Eddie Olivares, Dallas County Health Human Services. Item 13A, discussion and action on authorizing Eddie Olivares, Dallas County Health Human Services Chief Administrative Officer to sign a letter of support for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Arroyo Colorado, a watershed program grant application to TCQ, focusing on the, on the possible future funding to develop a digital mapping of Hidalgo County's OSSF or septic systems in accordance with Texas A&M AgriLife five-year strategic plan. I have Mr. Flores here from Texas A&M, and he's just going to give a brief overview of the grant application. Mr. Flores. Hello, Judge Commissioners. My name is Jaime Flores. I'm actually the uh, – I applied for the grant under Texas – for Texas A&M University. One of the tasks is to develop an OSSF database. Uh, when we updated our uh, – Watershed Protection Plan for the Arroyo, Colorado. Uh, we used 911 data to find, uh, to locate the, the septic systems in the county. What we want to do is go back and verify the OSSF information, ground truth it, and develop a uh, GIS database that we could share with the county and all the cities in the county that could have a map of all of their OSSFs in, in the area. And uh, the wastewater treatment facility operators can also use this tool to map and plan where they're going to develop a new uh, lift stations, and when they uh, upgrade their wastewater treatment facilities. Awesome. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flutter. Thank you, Judge. Okay. I'm going to continue here. All right. Item uh, 13B, sir, uh, <laughs> health care funding district, and 13C, indigent health care program. So there's no action unless there's any questions on those items. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you, Eddie. Item 14, Facilities Management. If I may, Judge. Commissioners, item 14, A for uh, Facilities Management. Requesting approval for payment of claims to Universe Holding, Inc., totaling $81.19. This is with authority for the county treasurer to issue payment after review and audit procedures are completed by our county auditor. Motion to approve. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Am morning, I next? <laughs> Yvonne Ramon with the Elections Department. Item 15A, um, there is, uh, well, the update that I would have is to encourage everyone to either register or make changes by October 10th. That is the deadline in order to be able to participate in our upcoming constitutional election on November 7th. I will continue with item B, A161823. Would it be okay, uh, uh, you Mr. Can read Payne? All of them. Yes, if I just read the caption on one and then list each one individually instead of rereading. Thank That'll you. That will be fine. Okay. Approval of the 2017 November Constitutional Election Services contract between Hidalgo County and the following. Number one, City of Alamo for their election to be held on November 7th, 2017. City of Donna. Each one? Okay. Yes. Uh, the City of Donna. Number two, number three, the city of Ed Couch. Number four, the city of Edinburgh. And number five, the city of La Jolla. Motion to approve 15B1 through 5. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Item 16, our Head Start program. We only have one item, and the wrong backup was submitted to you. Mr. Garcia has uh, corrected one. I wanted to reappoint uh, Dr. Martin Castillo. Okay. Um, Thank you. I may just elaborate a little bit. We're following the standards, and the standards allow for a person to be selected uh, or appointed one year at a time for a maximum of five years. And we'll come back with a revision of the bylaws as soon as, um, as we're able to um, iron out all the things that we have to deal with in, that, in the bylaws. So are we reappointing board members, or you can you can appoint a new person, or you can appoint the person that you ha that you have in place. I'm going to reappoint my board person. Okay. Uh, 
I'm coming with a new appointment, but I'll be reporting it later. Later. Okay. Your your current appointment will continue until the new mm -hmm. one is, is okay. Um, I heard from Ms. Mona, but Dr. Um, Commissioner Flores is not here, so we'll wait un until he comes. That yes, he, he wanted to. He needs to be the one to, to yes. let you know who he wants. Yes, he. I I do know who he wants, but I think he needs to do it here. Okay. All right. Okay. We do need that. Motion, motion to approve. Second. On the Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, Commissioner Fuentes, you appointed the same person. Okay. So there's three appointments that were approved. Thank you. Item 17, our WIC program. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Clarissa Ramirez for the Hidalgo County WIC program. Here to present on item 17A, requesting approval to reimburse county employee Esther Carizales for the amount of $470 for the renewal of the IBLCE license with authority for the county treasurer to issue check after review, audit, and processing procedures have been completed by the county auditor. Motion approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Right. Ms. Ramirez, just for the record, what does IBLCE stand for? International uh, Breastfeeding Lactation Consultant. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Because <laughs> it's an acronym. But, with the, um, but it, Education. Okay. Sorry about that. No, no, no. It's because she's an IBCLC. And oh. She's an International Breastfeeding Lactation Consultant. So that's the actual license that she gets. We voted on it, correct? Yes. We already voted? Yes, we voted. Yes. Done. All right, thank well, you. Thank you so much. 18A, Mayor. Morning, Judge Commissioners. 18A, appointment of a board member to represent the County of Hidalgo on the Donald Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone, number one, Board of Directors. I'd like to ask for David Suarez to be our representative. Move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Commissioner, for the record, we for the record, I'll be abstaining. The judge uh, abstains. Thank you. All right, under 18B, sir. 18B, we're requesting approval to accept the counter offer to purchase a track of land known as Parcel 8, 9, and 24 associated with the Mile 6 West Road Improvement Project. Motion so approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 19. Good Chris morning, Judge Chris. Commissioners. Item 19A. <clears throat> requesting approval of an interlocal, interlocal cooperation agreement between the County of Hidalgo and the City of Hidalgo regarding road improvements for the Precinct 2 Valmex Drive project. Motion to approve. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 19A2, in accordance with Section 791.014 of the Texas Government Code, requesting approval of the interlocal cooperation agreement project for the Precinct 2 Valmex Drive project. So move. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 19B1, approval of interlocal agreement between the City of Hidalgo and the County of Hidalgo, Texas, to assist one another in multiple projects to be defined by mutual agreement in which both the City and the County will benefit from the outcome of the work. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 19B2, in accordance with Section 791.014 of the Texas Government Code, will request an approval of the Interlocal Cooperation Agreement. So, so moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 19C, will request an approval to accept the counteroffer to purchase a tract of land known as Parcel 2 for the Precinct 2 Rancho Blanco Road Extension Project. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Tell us about it, Mundo. It just it's uh, it's the uh, appraised value plus three hundred dollars. Yeah, yes, uh, we're, we're uh, the counter offer was an additional three hundred dollars of the appraised value, and that was to cover um, legal expenses on their part. All right. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Item twenty, our budget office.
Morning, Judge Commissioner Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Uh, item 28 is an introduction of representatives uh, from the County Wellness Program, Personalized Prevention. Judge Commissioners, I'd like to introduce Ms. Lisa uh, Van Akron, who is with Personalized Prevention and her staff. They're going to be heading up the County's Wellness Program. Uh, and she just wanted to introduce herself and then just say a couple of words. Thank you so much for having us today. Morning. I really just wanted to, my name is Lisa Van Acker, and I'm the president and CEO of Personalized Prevention. We're really excited about the opportunity to work with all of your employees. Uh, this is Julie Gonzalez and Andrea Garcia. They will be our boots on the ground here, um, going to the different locations, visiting and introducing themselves to the employees. One of the first things that we're going to start doing is um, working with people at open enrollment and telling them who we are. Um, and then doing a, what we call a biometric screening to allow people to understand their health status and their health risks. So Julie, if you pass out these. Yeah. This is just a sample of what the employees will get. Every year people go to their doctor's office and they get their, their annual physical exam and you know maybe a month or a couple weeks later you get a phone call that says everything was okay. Um, but you really don't understand exactly what your lab work means. So um, we will come on site and explain these results to the, to the individuals. So um, the labs that we're taking um, and the importance to their health. And we're starting in October. So we just wanted you to be aware. Thank you. Uh, we also wanted to introduce the new logo. Um, oh, technical difficulties. Okay. We have... There we go. So the importance of introducing this new logo is that as the employees see uh, information and communication that comes out with this on it, they know it's related to the wellness program here. Oh. So the importance of, of introducing the logo is that the employees know and understand that when they see this logo, that it's communication with regard and related to the employee wellness program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Uh, no action is needed on that item, uh, Judge Commissioners. Item 20B, uh, discussion, consideration, and approval of the uh, indirect cost allocation rate of 7.36% uh, for the grant fiscal year 2018 for the WIC program. Move to approve. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 21A, our purchasing department. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. Dina Trevino from Purchasing Department. Item 21A, one award of the lowest responsible bid and contract meeting all specifications to Delta Specialties RFB 2017, 207-0816, traffic road signs and other miscellaneous equipment. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21B for Precinct 1. Approval of project and interlocal agreement between County of Hidalgo, City of Donna, and City of Westlaco for the provisions of joint efforts for the reconstruction of Midway Road starting at 18th Street and ending at Business 83. Is, are, are all the, is all the paperwork in order for that? Yes. And I'm just stating that it's approval of the project and interlocal agreement. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21B2, requesting except, exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code, sh Section 262024 for professional service. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Presentation of scoring grid of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approval, approval of engineering services for geotechnical and construction material testing. Motion to approve. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. C. Authority for a purchasing department to negotiate in prof uh, professional engineering services agreement commencing with a number ranked firm. Motion approved. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Precinct 4, 21C1, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas Local Government Code, Section 262. 024 for professional services. So moved. Second. Those, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21C1, presentation of scoring grid of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool of professional engineering services 
for geotechnical and construction material testing. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. C. Authority for Purchase Department to negotiate professional engineering services agreement commencing with a number one rank firm. Motion approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21C. To approval of an amendment to Exhibit A, Attachment 1 of Contract C-170057-0516 between Hidalgo County and Model Laundry as requested by Hidalgo County Auditor's Office to reflect additional locations in order to pro proceed to process payment for pending precinct four invoices, including authorization for a purchase department to add and delete any subsequent locations as followed under the contract Exhibit A. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge, Ms. Dina, the, mm -hmm. the, the auditor's office requested that this be to, to add or to clarify that there's additional locations that are permissible. It's stated in the agreement. It's not needed, but uh, in order for them to pay uh, some invoices, they wanted us to bring it back to court and to state it, to, to, add, to, to uh, add and delete any additional locations. Okay. Judge Commissioners, I mean, just for the record, the contract states the additional locations, and so this is just to clarify these additional locations. Yes, just, just to, to comply to to to, com to fulfill the auditor's request. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. We do have closed. Under session. open forum, did anyone okay. sign up? Yes, we do have. Uh, Open form. My apologies. Um, uh, Eva Bustos. She spoke. She already oh, she spoke. spoke. Okay. Uh, Andrea Garcia. She was with the wellness. Okay. And we have Miss Fern McClary. Um, again, as a reminder, I will ask uh, everyone to respect the speaker's time at the podium. There's three minutes, and I will advise when there's a minute. All right. First thing I would like to say, the procurement specialist for a position that y'all created last week for $60,000-ish, uh, is this going out to the public so we can get qualified people, uh, new people, whatever, or is this a friend, family, or loved one of someone that's in that department? I am constantly amazed at the way you commissioners create to take money from the people. You fund uh, consultants to oppose requiring a picture ID to vote, but the Edinburgh Library requires a driver's license to check out a book. You say you are not here to, in, uh, to increase the tax rate, but you extend the county's debt for 30 years and declare that this is a sign of great financial management. We are glad for the tax rate reduction, but it is for one year, and the interest debt will continue for 30 years. Forty percent of the people cannot pay their taxes now. What do you think will happen when you add $350 million courthouse, new administration building, and provide $6 million for each commissioner? The public comments that I get the most is, firm. you are the only one that tells them that we cannot pay any more taxes. Now, you have added insult to injury. You are creating programs to give away public money to the rich. This is the economic development and the TERS program, uh, money to, giving money to the rich and increasing taxes on the poor. But your greatest cover-up is that the county has nothing to do with the appraisal district. Your, uh, your point uh, is that, that increased property values are not influenced by the commissioner's uh, court, but it is. The county has the greatest number of votes, and this directly influences who the chairman of the board of directors will be. The chairman is the uh, Hidalgo County Board of Directors has received the greatest number from the county votes for the over 22 years, and our property values have been going sky high. Judge, when, in, when and if you leave office, Hidalgo County will have the greatest debt it has ever had, and more people will be in poverty than ever before. My guess at the last minute you will decide that, the, uh, decide that based on public outcry of support, you will run one more term. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Judge, we do have executive session. Move, move to go to executive session. Oh, 
Okay. So in the 551071 and 072, we need a motion to proceed to executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Amen. All right. We are, we are back in open session. Mr. Guerra. Under open session 25A, Real Estate Acquisition Corporation for saying there's no action to be taken today. Item 25B, pending under potential litigation, there is no action to be taken today. Under 25C, potential litigation related to possible causes of action against drug manufacturers and or distributors of opioids. Judge Commissioners, I want to, this is an action item that was already undertaken by Commissioner's Court a few weeks ago. Uh, I just want to uh, clarify uh, and, and uh, for the record, uh, clarify the firms that will be representing the County of Hidalgo. Uh, and it will be Watts Guerra, LLP, The Gallagher Law Firm, LLP, Fibich, Lebron, Copeland, Briggs, and Josephson, and Juan and uh, Juan and Ojosa. These will be the attorneys or the groups that will be representing the county of Hidalgo. So I'm asking the court uh, to clarify the record with these with these uh, attorneys and firms, uh, and also authority for the county judge uh, to sign the letter of engagement uh, via the uh, contract uh, uh, with these uh, firms and attorneys. So move. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 25D. For the and for the record, oh. Commissioner Fuentes is abstaining. Yes. Yes, Commissioner Fuentes does abstain for the record. 25D, CL 173805 uh, E, Sulema Gomez versus Del County, Del County Drainage District Number 1. Judge Commissioners, uh, uh, for the record, I'm asking the court to, uh, to acknowledge that I will be asking Ms. Josephine Ramirez's office to facilitate uh, on behalf of the Bell County the suit that's been filed. So, Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. 25E, claim of Sandra Luevano, Judge Commissioners, I'd like to sell an authority in the amount of $140.73. So, Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. There's no need to go back to uh, closed or open session. And um, for next week, Judge Commissioners, we do have a scheduled Commissioner's Court, but as always, I work with uh, the, the schedules. There, there appears uh, there is a conflict next week uh, with uh, one of our Commissioners, uh, and so um, we do have a holiday on Monday. The schedule would have been the 10th uh, the next day, so uh, would everybody be okay to have Commissioner's Court? It is not a regular meeting, and so it would be special uh, on Wednesday. Or Thursday? Wednesday the 11th. Wednesday the 11th? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Okay. And I'm also working on for the meeting of October 24th. Uh, again, uh, with everybody's busy schedule, I'll be uh, looking to to have an alternative date uh, for that meeting as well. Um, um, excuse me. The 11th, Swaggett's going to be here during work. We won't be able to broadcast. I'm sorry, what was that? Swaggett's going to be doing some work in here on the 11th on the system. Can so we, we delay? Can we delay Swaggett coming? Or it's an all day install. They're flying in from Dallas. Wow. I will work with everyone today and we will have a date for next week. Okay? Okay. Is there anything pressing next week? Uh, I'm the one that has a conflict. I just won't be flying in until, until Tuesday. I'll, no I'll, we'll figure it out, Commissioners. We will figure it out, and yeah. then we'll have an appropriate uh, disclosure for everybody. Yeah. Okay. If there's nothing present that, I, that uh, on in regards to agenda items, you can just okay. continue to have it on Tuesday if, if there's no conflict. We'll figure it out. I apologize. We did it Wednesday because we don't think we need it. Okay. Okay. Um, motion adjourned. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. That's the one we're looking for.